I see a dilemma in this country in as much as uh, we're dependent upon oil, we're dealing with countries that aren't uh, looking for our best interests, uh, we're dealing with situations where our economy is based upon this, and that we're now, you know, in, in almost a catch-22 where we've kind of bound ourselves and our rules and regulations and, and desires to, to save the planet and its resources, but yet those resources are the same thing that are driving our economy in the oil. So now with this new technology, is it based upon oil or is it based upon some other type of energy? Yeah, these technologies are not based on oil at all. Uh, matter of fact, uh, they will put an end to fossil fuels. So and really, if you think about it, the earth is being choked by fossil fuels. Uh, the pollution is getting worse and worse. The global warming is getting worse and worse. They expect these things to escalate. So really, we need to get away from fossil fuels. Uh, and so these technologies, let's take a gravity motor. It runs on gravity, and gravity is the input. It uh, also uses, I shouldn't, I don't want to oversimplify, it uses other forces of nature. And of course, everything's an oversimplification when you're talking to this to the layman. So I try, uh, so please uh, bear with me on all that. But uh, basically, the gravity runs on gravity, gravity motors run on gravity and other forces of nature like inertia and so on. Uh, and that can be harnessed into mechanical force. And so there's no pollution, there's no, uh, there's no need for fuel, um, and these things work. They've been around for 300 years, a lot of people have seen them. And back on the quantum motors, or quantum generators, basically there's a field called the quantum flux or quantum field. Some people call it ether, there's a lot of different names for it. But this field is basically the same field that powers a lightning storm. If you ever see a lightning storm, there's a huge amount of energy expended. And there's approximately 2,000 storms going on somewhere on the Earth all the time. And each it seems like more every day, too. Yeah, and, and each of those storms are able to power the whole planet, uh, if you count the amount of energy being expended in the storm. The electrical energy, that's just the electrical energy. It's not counting all the mechanical energy, like the wind energy and so on. So basically, nature is already doing this as an example and our systems have been able to make the energy come in at a stable rate where it doesn't have huge arcs like the lightning because that would of course burn up everything in your system including you uh, but our systems are able to stabilize this to where it's, it comes in at a smooth rate and it comes in uh, continuously and not just in arcs and light up light bulbs which uh, you Steve have seen all this uh, and so you can verify that it's for real. Uh, Steve is a little bit of background of Steve. He's an electrical guy and very good with sound systems and video and so on. And uh, and he's had his own business for many years. So he's not a, we got a guy here that's highly competent. Well, thank you for that plug. But uh, what we're here to talk about is, is the future and, and what is it that we can do as, as individuals and as a group of God's people to get this off the ground and get it going. You know, it, it's good to talk about these things, it's good to have the knowledge about these things, but if it doesn't come into a practical product that we can use, it's all just theory. So what is it we can do to move it from, you know, the thought process, the, the building process, to get the implementation done? Yes, uh, the machines have been built. We've built uh, literally tens of thousands of machines over the years, um, more than most people would believe. Uh, and, and many of them have been uh, uh, perfected to a degree that's necessary to get them into the, into the world. We've had them running cars, we've had them running houses. Uh, so now, basically, where we're at for present and future is uh, we're working on a prototype that we will mass produce and as the funds come in and, and the reason you know the, as the as the donations come in and the ties come in uh, we will we've already purchased land we will break ground and build a factory and uh, we will mass produce a device that everybody can buy that'll be affordable and be any fuel required uh, you can you'll be able to run your house with it you'll be able to get rid of your electric meter uh, and then eventually run our cars 
and as different models come out that are more powerful you can run your car uh, initially there might be a motorcycle that'll be runnable with with this type of technology right at the beginning that would be one of the things we'd like to mass produce uh, after the, the house size unit because motorcycles are very uh, useful and used worldwide in many countries there's three times four times more motorcycles than there are automobiles some places you hardly see any automobiles all you see is motorcycles on the road so this is a technology that everybody needs. You have a motorcycle that, that doesn't use any fuel, doesn't make pollution, doesn't cost anything to run other than changing your, changing your oil if it's, if it's that type of engine. Uh, if it's an electric motor, you just got to, you know, basically don't have to do anything. Uh, you just drive it. Uh, just check the charge level occasionally and make sure everything's working properly. Uh, that's basically it. It's a little bit of maintenance on anything that's mechanical. Sounds like a whole new paradigm, uh, a new way of thinking, a new way of approaching problems that have uh, pretty much uh, taken us to the point where we need those solutions, and it, it looks like maybe the timing is right for putting those into play. Definitely, Steve. This is this is the time for the world uh, to switch over and uh, you know to start introducing these things and to start using these things, and uh, within a hundred years uh, we can have. We can have a transition even within 50 years, even within 20 years, we can have a transition where we have a clean world and there's no pollution or virtually no pollution. All pollution could be eliminated. It's not necessary to pollute this planet. We can live in harmony with this planet and the planet can prosper. The earth can be returned to paradise status. It's, uh, even though there's many people living on this earth, people can learn to live in harmony with the earth and I would say the main offenders are not the not the common people the main offenders are the big or big industry oil companies and uh, and uh, the capitalists and so on do you see this as, as uh, something that uh, could be done in a different way uh, as opposed to giving it to a big corporation making a lot of money and letting them control this new energy or do you see this as a way of sharing that technology with with the people of the world to help the people of the world yes this is what the world needs and this is what the people need is is help and this is what we envision happening is all the people getting involved and that we are able to mass produce this the people get uh, units uh, at a discount rate anybody that's helped will get a discount um, and we envision that these that these things will help the world and really it's going to be hard for any business to maintain control on this because there's so many different ways to do it once you understand the technology uh, there's literally infinite ways to do it so any any of those ways can be patented so anybody basically can learn to make these things that has uh, you know enough intelligence uh, to understand electricity and uh, and the different flows and the different aspects of electricity uh, it was, whereas gravity motors are even simpler, they're just mechanical devices, and uh, a lot more people will even understand those. And again, there's many ways to make them. We have 11 ways to make them right now, and uh, they work. And so um, if we can come up with a simple enough one, the plan is there, is to give it away to the world. And uh, it has to be given away correctly. We've given away three technologies in the past, and what happens is unscrupulous people come in and, and patent it and then uh, all of a sudden you, what you did to give it away was a waste of time because then they tell you don't make it anymore, don't talk about it anymore. Uh, but what we, we have a plan for the gravity motor. Uh, again, it requires some funding, but once, this, once we get our funding in place uh, for the gravity motor, whether this will be before or after the one we mass produce, I don't know. But anyway, once this, once this funding gets in place, we have a plan to give it away where the people of the world will be able to benefit. It won't just be a select few. It'll be everybody. It'll be simple enough that everybody can build it, and, and the, it'll be given away in a manner that no one can, uh, no one can capitalize it or, or take possession of it or corner the market on it. It'll be out there for every single person to use and build and harness. Again. I want to say thank you to Timothy Thrapp of WITTS. Uh, it's been a pleasure talking with you this morning, and uh, we look forward to some solutions for our energy problems.